Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen we are here again with another episode of in the zone they are one of our licensees they recently got our zone enterprise license we have with us akal tech ceo jafar sab the sab assalamu alaikum sir ji wa alaikum assalam uh sir since um, your technology is sort of like an emerging technology so can you give us a brief about what exactly what sort of technology you work in ji uh yeah i would love to so we are part of the semiconductor industry uh jo ke usko chip uh, well it's also called chip design industry uh it's a, it's a very global industry and uh, we have uh, you know uh, some of the top names in the industry like intel samsung qualcomm uh, apple all of them they are the companies which are making uh, some of these chips uh, we are part of that industry uh, overall this industry just to give a few numbers is uh, on an annual basis right now around 600 billion dollars in revenue uh, per year it's projected to be 20 by 2030 it's going to be uh, about a trillion dollar so uh, actually even more importantly this industry drives the overall microelectronics industry which is about 3 trillion dollars so i know that a lot of big numbers here but the uh, i think the big picture here is that it's a very big industry it affects everyone of us in our lives because whether it's a mobile phone it's a laptop or it's a wearable uh, data centers everything has a chip behind it so in a nutshell uh, this is the industry that uh, we are part of why do you think right now it's 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 need of the time ever to have this technology a semiconductor industry um in pakistan why do you think this is the need of the time right so i will answer this in uh, you know uh, one is maybe like a, from a bigger perspective that what is the industry and wh- what's the significance so significant of the uh, of this industry is uh, the fact that it's uh, right the backbone of our you know modern day economy our living all of that and the second part uh, to that is that uh, why now Uh, so in the last 10 years uh, there, there are a lot of trends that have been going on i mean a lot of people have been paying attention to this uh, tech war that is going on between us and the western side western economies in and obviously the asia pacific region which is growing in especially china uh it has brought this uh, to the front uh, that you know why it's important the other part is that uh, this is an industry which is a very profitable industry it creates a lot of job opportunities and uh, we uh, you know in pakistan being the fifth most populous country we have a very large young population uh, who would love to get into this industry if uh, they get uh, you know good training and they are qualified they have the skill set the third part is that uh, chip industry is not just a technology not just economy but it's also important that for you know sort of sovereignty of every company every country that we have uh, we build our own chips or integrated circuits or system on a chip uh, we can uh, you know it goes with all three of these names and uh, you know it's a uh, it, it's it's absolutely critical that we don't let this opportunity uh, go by and i'll talk a little a few of other trends which i think are also very relevant in this uh, discussion about uh, semiconductors uh so uh, you you were saying about bringing this uh, technology in pakistan uh, a lot of youth will get opportunities but do you think our youth are skilled enough for the particular industry you're talking about uh, how do you how do you cope up with this do you have skilled employees or do you train them and how long do you train them uh, you know until they become a resource for you so this is a very critical point because you know whenever i talk to people who are overseas and uh, we talk about numbers that okay you know we have this many startups right now i mean current company ecoltech solutions you know this is where we are so their question is uh, how can we scale it so the scalability part is extremely critical especially for uh, mid sized companies and even more so for larger companies so for that part what uh, is working for us so far in pakistan is that uh, we have our in house training program so we go uh, to the top universities in pakistan and uh, all around pakistan but especially since we are based in islamabad uh, universities like nast uh, universities like fast and also you know universities around uh, you know kaidazm university or namal or gik so all of the uh, and uet texla uet campuses uh, across pakistan 
so we we really tap into those uh, uh, you know graduates from those uh, universities we work with their professors so that the curriculum gets uh, updated and their labs are well equipped then uh, we have a pretty strenuous process in terms of uh, intake uh, we have our entrance test and uh, we do interviews the interview is like a job interview then we uh, bring them into our training program so our training program is about 4 months in duration uh, so it covers the key parts of chip design uh, industry and the skills which are needed so we uh, in 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 uh, in at akal tech we have obviously people who have got the industry background so we teach uh, for these 4 months we teach them the key parts of design process r and d of uh, chip um and how it is uh, designed how it's verified how it's implemented and we've been we've been pretty uh, good at it uh, we uh, have taken some help from uh, university of california berkeley uh, in uh, in california they have a very robust program there are a lot of other universities also um so we have developed this training program which we considered our ip uh, and based on that you know just to give you an example that uh, akal tech solution was started with six people two and a half years ago and we are now 60 so all of our growth is really based on um, you know these uh, trainings that we have done in house very working closely with academia i can really see that to you internationally as well as in our national universities um with this kind of plan where do you envision akal tech in probably 3 to 5 years of time where do you see uh, akal tech what would the company be doing okay um you know uh the, all of these growth plans uh, you know a lot of these things we can project yeah. uh i mean if i look at it uh, over the last two and a half years we have grown 10x so i'm not saying that we are going to grow 10x every few years but i think it's very much dependent on the kind of work that we are getting from uh, the company that we are servicing in silicon valley california it's a stealth mode startup Uh so right now we are focusing on three main areas. Uh one part is uh, um, is the RTL design part which is based on Verilog coding. Uh so this is an area that is very critical and uh, there is uh, I see quite a bit of growth. Uh the second part is verification. So every chip that you know comes to the market uh about you know a 70% of the time is spent on verifying that chip. because uh when someone is designing something they might not be able to cover all corner cases all the use models and that's where the verification team comes in and so we have grown a lot in verification i think that that trend will continue the third part is uh, the implementation part uh so let me take a step back so a chip that you know goes into a mobile phone or a wearable or a laptop uh it it takes about 2 years sometimes even 3 years to design that chip and there are about 14 15 different type of engineers uh and technologists who work on this so right now we at akal tech we are still you know focusing on three four main areas so i think that in the next few years we can grow this further uh there is a validation part of uh, chips that we can potentially grow Uh, there is also a part when the chip is manufactured by a foundry let's say in uh, south korea or or taiwan and it comes back then we have to do verification and bring up so we can grow in that space there is uh, prototyping fpg prototyping so i think uh, there are a lot of avenues uh, in which we can grow uh, i can i i would say that in the next two years we can uh, we can double our you know head count to get into you know 120 and 150 people this this industry seems like it doesn't have any competition there's so much work to do in here so i moved back to pakistan for and a half years ago and uh, back then you know the first i i feel well a few times people have started other companies but they for different reasons they were not they didn't stay operational in the last four and a half years uh, you know about seven eight other companies uh, startups have also come in but i totally agree with you that you know we have a huge opportunity to grow uh i would say that i would welcome any new companies from silicon valley in us uh, you know in austin area uh, texas or even in europe uh, and and finally i mean asia pacific region i think there is huge amount of talent that is available in pakistan 
The challenge is that how do you um, how do you train them? Uh, what I have seen in my personal experience is that the engineers motivated. I think our young people are very talented. They just don't have this kind of opportunity to work in a globalized tech industry. And uh, what I've seen in the last uh, you know four or five years is that you give them the opportunity, they work day and night. Uh, you know, in our training program, some people ask me that can this be online training, how many hours a day? And I tell them this is a full-time job because our trainee engineers, they work 12 to uh, 14 hours a day. Most of them work over the weekends. And when they are part of the company, uh, you know, again, we have very, uh, you know, long working hours. But the good part is that they are learning so much that they are always excited that what's next. You know, they want to grow. Uh, they see a lot of opportunity. And uh, in Pakistan, if I can say that we have gone through some different trends, uh, you know, at one point uh, uh, there was a lot of uh, interest in power generation. Then there was a lot of interest in telecom companies, but they were all local trends. I think the semiconductor industry and the chip design industry is a very global industry. So these engineers, when they start working in it, they find that there are no bounds, you know, and the work that we are doing right now, sitting in Islamabad, we can be anywhere. You know, we can be in California, we can be in Europe, we can be anywhere in the world, uh, because uh, this is, uh, you know, the kind of work we are doing. And, and it's very challenging. Uh, I think in engineering, that's uh, one um, aspect which is very exciting for people, is that there's always something new. There is some new challenge coming, there is some, some new standard coming, there is some new application. I mean, for example, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, everyone is talking about it. So there's a very strong hardware component to it too, because all of this uh, AI is not just software. You know, all of those algorithms, uh, those uh, applications that are being developed, they have to be tested on hardware too. So I think those are some of the exciting things and, and you know, compensation wise, it's pretty good. Uh, so all of them collectively, I think are helping us. Coming to Special Technology Zones Authority, what are your expectations? Because you recently got a license. Where do you see what sort of uh, incentives, exemptions, or probably ecosystem benefits? What are the kind of uh, benefits you are thinking uh, that you might be getting from this license? So I think that, you know, Special Technology Zone uh, plays a very critical role. And uh, let me take a step back and talk a little bit why I think that's important. So before coming back to Pakistan, I looked at some of the tech clusters that have developed around the world. Uh, and this is something that, uh, you know, uh, people in the industry know very well. I mean, there's obviously Silicon Valley, there is uh, in Southern California, uh, there is industry, there is in Austin area, in Texas, as well as, you know, Cambridge area in UK, there is a tech, uh, tech clusters in other European countries, as well as South Korea, Japan, China, Taiwan. One common thing in all of them is that they have brought together the key stakeholders. So what I mean by that is the industry, the academia, and the people who have, uh, you know, who are, uh, whether it's through venture funding, whether it is the government entities. And I think, I feel that STZA in Pakistan is really playing that role. And uh, I've been to a lot of events which STZA has organized in which there are people, there is a presentation from the industry, there's a lot of academia presence, as well as from stakeholders. So now coming down exactly, you know, how, you know, we got interested in STZA, uh, it was that, uh, you know, we wanted a very professional, high quality work environment. I think this, uh, our current facility, Islamabad, which is you know, put together by STZA is a perfect location for us and for other companies, you know, who are interested in coming to Pakistan and starting their own ventures. The second part is the tax benefits. So uh, benefits in terms of, you know, no taxes on profits. So we are not into manufacturing, but if there's a company that is interested in manufacturing, they don't have to pay capital uh, taxes and other, uh, you know, uh, costs which is associated with hardware. Uh, so I think this is uh, this is a full package which uh, you know STZA is providing us. My last question would be: You have over decades of uh, experience in this industry, you know, in fab and fabless uh, semiconductors. You worked with almost all the good names that I can remember in, from North America. 
specifically. What is your message to them if they would see Pakistan as, you know, a place they can expand their business? Also to the youth who want to enter in, you know, in this semiconductor uh, industry and field and they, they want to work. So what uh, what is the message for them? Okay, so yeah, I think before coming back to Pakistan, I, I worked at some of the large companies. Uh, and if I talk about the semiconductor ecosystem, it has companies which you have pointed out, you know, fabless. Then there are companies which are providing IP or intellectual property to the companies which are building chips, uh, as, as we talked about, you know, whether it's Apple, Google, or Meta. Um, and then there are foundries, which are the ones which actually build these chips. So I think I would invite all uh, these uh, companies, which are, you know, most of them are based in US, but they're also in Europe and Asia Pacific region, that Pakistan is a good location for this. And why do I say that? In the industry, it's very critical that once you have built up uh, your team, that your team stays with you for the long haul. So in Pakistan, because it's still a growing industry, uh, I have not lost a single employee in the last two and a half years to any local company. Uh, so uh, retention is very good. People, engineers are very committed and you know, they, they have very strong uh, technical background based on the top universities that we go to. I'll, I'll you know, expand that a little bit. You know, if we compare to some other geographic locations, there is obviously a lot of expertise available, but tier one, tier two engineers are almost impossible to get and they are very expensive. And plus they have a lot of options, so they move around. I think that's a big advantage in Pakistan that uh, since the industry is in the early stages uh, and there's a large uh, population of uh, qualified uh, new college graduates who are coming in electrical engineering, computer engineering, computer science, they are, uh, we have really captive, uh, you know, employees in that sense. And the other part is like for any industry, you know, what is the growth potential for this industry globally? and that. You know, all indications are that it's a very high growth industry. So there are opportunities uh, overseas. There are opportunities in Pakistan to grow. Um, I think it's really, uh, I know that I was there uh, in the valley for quite some time. So people are concerned, you know, the first mover sort of anxiety. But I can tell you that, uh, you know, the work we are doing here, uh, right here in Islamabad, uh, is the kind of work anyone sitting around the world uh, in this industry will be doing. So it's it's cutting edge uh, and there are no, uh, I don't see that any roadblocks to the kind of work that we are doing and it's, it's really uh, taking that uh, decision. And obviously I understand that a lot of companies will start small and that's perfectly fine. You know, you can go based on your requirements, based on your needs and time frame. But I think uh, from a, you know, from a technology perspective, from an environment, ecosystem perspective, I think uh, Pakistan is a great location. Thank you so much, Afi Saab, and uh, we wish more companies to be coming in Pakistan and also wish you all the best for your architect to grow and achieve all the success you plan for it. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have any feedback, please know that it's very valuable to us. Please email us on the ticker below and we'll see you in another episode. Thank you so much.